Congratulations to the class of 2021. No, not the graduates. I'm talking about the new inductees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. My thoughts on the 12, yes, 12 acts selected for induction are coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. Well, that's interesting. That was my first thought when I saw the list of inductees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class of 2021. Yes, some of the names on the list were entirely predictable, but there's also some wild curveballs that I never saw coming. If anything, it seems like the Rock Hall is trying to compensate for last year's phantom ceremony by making a big swing this year. To be fair, the lack of true celebration around the 2020 inductees had more to do with the pandemic than with the acts selected for induction. Last year's list was as controversial as ever, but the delayed and then canceled ceremony and the eventual performance-free HBO special made it all feel like the Rock Hall kind of gave up. Of course, all of the major award shows of the past 12 months have had to make big adjustments in their presentations, but none felt as utterly flaccid as the Rock Hall's token broadcast. Now here we are in 2021, receiving the news of this year's inductees at the time of year we'd usually be gearing up for the actual ceremony. That's now shifted to late October, with a broadcast date still to be announced. Hopefully that ceremony will see the return of live performances and all-star collaborations, which have arguably been the best part of the entire annual spectacle, or debacle, depending on your perspective. But before we talk about who will be honored this year, let's talk briefly about who won't be. Out of the 16 acts nominated in 2021, I'm not shocked at all to see at least a third of them passed over for induction. Mary J. Blige, Kate Bush, New York Dolls, Dionne Warwick, and Rage Against the Machine are all highly influential acts in different ways, but I wasn't betting on any of them to make the cut this year. Then there's perennially snubbed acts like Devo and Shaka Khan, both of whom I expect to see inducted at some point, but then it'll feel so overdue to be almost trivial. But there's two acts getting passed over this year that I think are particularly noteworthy. I was utterly surprised to see Afrobeat legend Fela Kuti nominated for the Rock Hall, not just this year, but literally at all. I was even more surprised to see how well he did in the fan vote, ranking a strong number two. I'm hearing that's due in large part to a big push of support from his fans outside of America. Kudos to them for mobilizing such a strong effort. But like last year's fan vote winners, Dave Matthews Band, massive support doesn't necessarily translate into induction. The same could be said for Iron Maiden, who placed an impressive fourth in the fan vote. I actually predicted they'd be inducted this year, if only to make up for the snub of Judas Priest last year. But once again, the Rock Hall has extended its general dismissal of the metal genre when they had the opportunity to acknowledge yet another groundbreaking and legendary act. That being said, the Rock Hall is throwing metal fans a bone this year, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. All right, so let's get into the acts that did make the cut in 2021, starting with someone I thought was a sure thing, and that's Tina Turner. Following in the footsteps of Stevie Nicks, Tina Turner now becomes the second woman to be inducted twice into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a performer. If anything, the recent HBO biographical documentary, Tina, serves as a complete illustration for why Turner has more than earned her spot as a solo artist. And while her previous induction as part of Ike and Tina Turner was also warranted, the documentary reinforces just how meaningful it is to recognize her talent and influence outside of that toxic and abusive partnership. Speaking of two-time inductees, this year the Rock Hall also welcomes back Carole King. Previously inducted as part of the songwriting duo of Goffin and King, this induction as a solo performer is also long overdue. Her 1971 album Tapestry is a true landmark and an essential part of any music library. Yet many have questioned if Carole King would have earned induction if not for that album. Has the rest of her solo musical output validated the honor? Well, honestly, Maybe not, but I think we still need to consider the cultural context here in which Tapestry has transcended all else to become something far more powerful than just one album. Should an artist be considered for Rock Hall induction based on the impact of a single album? If that album is Tapestry, 
And the answer for me is yes. We've got one more act with a second time induction connection, and that's Foo Fighters. 2021 was the band's first year for eligibility for the Rock Hall, and to me, it seemed like a no-brainer for them to be walk-ons. Dave Grohl previously joined the Rock Hall as a member of Nirvana, who were also inducted in their first year of eligibility. So, if two inductions wasn't impressive enough, having both honors on year one certainly says something about Dave's massive impact on rock music. He's virtually become the unofficial ambassador of rock, one of the genre's most visible advocates, utterly ubiquitous it seems, including being the pseudo-host of the Rock Hall's 2020 unceremonious TV ceremony. Like Tina Turner, Foo Fighters were a sure thing for 2021. Meanwhile, another first-year walk-on for 2021 is rap icon Jay-Z. I was actually on the fence with Jay-Z, and I didn't think he'd actually make the cut this year. His nomination was no surprise, and I fully expected he'd be inducted at some point. But I didn't think it would happen so soon, let alone at the exclusion of another legendary rapper also nominated for 2021. As for the usual rap isn't rock debate, I understand how yet another hip-hop act being inducted is going to rub some rock fans the wrong way, and I get it. But at the same time, when I look at the history of the Rock Hall's inductions, we've seen R&B acts being inducted from the very beginning. Rap is an evolution of that genre, and to that end, I do believe it deserves to be recognized by the Rock Hall. Do I think it was Jay-Z's time? Honestly, no. But things are about to get complicated. Again, stay tuned. Strange curves lie ahead. Now, in all the times I've covered the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here on this channel, one snub that has been mentioned more than any other is unquestionably Todd Rundgren. He's been nominated multiple times in the past, and I have no doubt his induction as part of the class of 2021 is going to be cause for celebration for his vocal legion of fans. Still, this is an induction I have mixed feelings about. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Todd Rundgren has arguably had a greater impact on music behind the scenes than as a performer. He's wildly innovative and probably one of rock's greatest producers of all time. He absolutely deserves to be inducted, if only based on those merits. But it's a harder sell when it comes to Todd Rundgren as a performer. Regardless, I did predict he'd finally receive that honor this year, and I am happy for him and his fans. The final act joining the Rock Hall in the performer category this year is new wave all-girl rock group The Go-Go's. Here's a band whose influence and impact is, in my opinion, very underrated. I think they matter much more than many people give them credit for. All that being said, their induction begs the what about question for a number of other long-snubbed female rock acts, most notably perhaps being The Runaways. But honestly, that's par for the course with the Rock Hall inductions every year. For every act that gets inducted, there's a dozen whatabouts that threaten to tarnish the honor. To me, the Go-Go's were a wild card pick this year. I didn't predict they'd win, so to speak, but I'm not surprised to see them on the list either. Speaking of surprises, the Rock Hall seems to be bringing back the side categories in a big way in 2021. In addition to the six acts being inducted in the performer category, there are six more acts being inducted in two additional categories. The Early Influence Award category returns this year, honoring three music pioneers. Charlie Patton was not only an influence on rock greats like Jimi Hendrix and Chuck Berry, he even predates the legendary blues man Robert Johnson. Then there's Gil Scott Heron, whose impact on R&B as well as funk, blues, soul, and jazz has spanned generations. And finally, there's Kraftwerk. Unquestionably, Kraftwerk was one of electronic music's pioneers. They were highly influential on a wide range of acts, including last year's inductees Depeche Mode and Nine Inch Nails. As much as I feel like they're long overdue for recognition by the Rock Hall, this category actually feels like the right fit to me. That's not to say that they didn't deserve to be inducted as performers, but maybe this category speaks more directly to the nature of their impact. Then there's the Musical Excellence Award. This is a rather ambiguous category if you think about it. Incidentally, it's also the category used to induct Ringo Starr as a solo act rather than the performer category his former bandmates were inducted under. This year, the Rock Hall is giving this award to legendary sideman Billy Preston, who played with acts as diverse as Little Richard, Ray Charles, and of course the Beatles, 
Also being honored with the Musical Excellence Award is legendary guitarist Randy Rhodes, best known for his amazing work with Ozzy Osbourne. Earlier I pondered if the Rock Hall was throwing metal fans a bone, and this is what I was referring to. Does it make up for the lack of metal acts in the performers category? I don't think so. And it's a bit ironic that Rhodes is being inducted before Ozzy himself. Ozzy was inducted into the Rock Hall as part of Black Sabbath, but not yet as a solo artist. And finally, there's LL Cool J, a third recipient of the Musical Excellence Award. LL Cool J was one of rap music's pioneers and one of the genre's earliest and biggest success stories. He holds the record for the most Rock Hall nominations, receiving his sixth in 2021. I'm thrilled to see him inducted at all, yet it feels like he's been slighted by the performer category, like Jay-Z took his spot. I predicted 2021 would be LL Cool J's year, but not this way. Now I'm predicting his sixth nomination as a performer will also be his last. So once again, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame simultaneously delights, confounds, and even frustrates music fans around the world. As an annual tradition, this is the 35th year of induction, so I'm not sure why anyone would expect anything less than that. To say Rock Hall nominations and inductions are based on an imperfect system would be an understatement. There's no shortage of music fans that absolutely despise it as an institution, not to mention a number of artists as well. As for me, and I've said this before, I just don't take it all that seriously. Generally speaking, I tend to agree that the artists inducted are worthy of recognition, but it is undeniable that there are many, many more that are also worthy but continue to be overlooked. I enjoy the annual debate about who should slash shouldn't or who will slash won't be inducted, but I don't get angry about any of it. It's just not worth it. And in any case, I'm still looking forward to the return of live music to the ceremony. It should be a night to remember regardless of where you stand in the annual debate over who's in and who's been snubbed. But as always, I welcome your comments on the subject. Do you agree with this year's winners? How do you feel about the extra categories? Who do you think is the biggest snub? And is there anyone in the class of 2021 that you think hasn't earned their spot? Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.